I'm Shoestring Jay and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things thrifty, frugal and money saving. And excuse my slightly sweaty appearance because even though it's 8am, it is already really, really hot here. I think it was the hottest day of the year so far here in Essex yesterday. It was 33, I think, degrees it, it hit. And, you know, I love sunshine. I love it. I don't love the heat. I just, I'm very fair skinned and I just start to you know, go go under. I can't function well when it's really, really hot. Archie doesn't like it, our dog either. He's not keen. Um, but Justin actually took a load of his coat off. He did it himself. We were hanging on, hanging on for the groomer who just takes forever to get back to us. She's very cheap, so we kind of stick with her and Archie knows her now and he's quite nervous. So uh, we stick with her, but she just doesn't wasn't coming back, and it was so hot. He just got some clippers from his brother and did him he did quite a good job actually. He he did quite a good job. Actually, I think he's feeling a lot better now. I am, you know, fairly bald, but I'm just so hot. It's just ridiculous. So, and um, we've been madly watering the greenhouse to keep our tomatoes and our cucumbers looking healthy. We've got some good crops actually. We didn't grow a lot because obviously we're going to move, hopefully we're going to move house, so um, there was no point in putting anything long term in the garden. So it's really just some, you know, summer crops really, like cucumbers and tomatoes and courgettes and peppers. The peppers are not doing very well at all. I put them in too late. Um, runner beans, they're doing quite well. Hopefully we will get a good crop of runner beans because I love those. Um, so we're getting some of those, that's really good. And I ate the first courgette last night. That was really nice, nice, very fresh from the garden. Ah, first courgettes. Been ready in a couple of days. Eating, I think. Look at that now. It's very sunny, it's a bit too bright to show you. And I'm sitting here Saturday morning. The house is immaculate. We have our open day today. I think we've got 15 viewings booked which I thought was really good and was the agency very happy with that until I spoke to Justin's niece who's got 45 viewings booked over the weekend but she's closer to London the house is is really lovely and you know there's very there's a shortage of kind of first-time buyer homes which is what theirs is it's also immaculate so um yeah so I thought we'd done we'd done well hopefully we will get an offer but it's got to be a good offer we still think the agent has underpriced us as we've started looking around and looking at what we will have to pay to go out to one of the villages. We think he's really, he's underpriced us. So the first thing I'm going to say to him is be telling everybody that comes around that we want this price because if we don't, we can't move. So I'm going to have to be quite tough with them. They definitely have. Another house has come up on the estate. 15, no, 15. 30 grand higher than ours 30 grand and granted they have a kitchen extension on the back which we don't have but they are a terrace which we're not and they have hardly any garden not compared to us so really that's just so much more than ours so I think we've, we have underpriced ourselves so we'll see it may be that we don't get a good enough offer today or we don't get any offer over the weekend or if we do we just don't get a good enough one we've got one on the table already but it's it's 15 grand less than we're willing to take um so yeah see what happens so i'm i'm doing this having a quick chat to you before the estate agent arrives um just to say what we've been doing this week and really very little really um we did have a little party it's just it was justin's mum's 90th birthday and we had a little gathering so um Justin's niece came with her two little children. They're so cute. So we had a little good time with them. Um, and we have, what else have we been doing? Well, mainly eating from the pantry. I just refused to do any shopping. Well, I did basics. I did have to go and get some milk and some butter and stuff like that. And I couldn't believe the prices. I'll show you that. Um, 
It was just, I couldn't believe how much the prices have, have risen. It's really worrying. I think it's all right if you've got a bit of spare. I mean, we always live quite frugally to allow ourselves to have a bit of spare so that we can do things like, you know, have little holidays and, you know, travel around and, and just, you know, have a bit of fun. Some people don't have any slack in their budget already and they're already being as frugal as they can. And, you know, we're going to have to cut back on lots of things ourselves. But, you know, I just, I, I so feel for those people. I think it's really, it's so bad. Oh, I've moaned about this in my last video. I said, I think it's so bad that in a rich country like the UK, we have kind of any level of poverty, really. It just doesn't seem to be right. But to kind of mitigate the increases, I have been eating from the pantry, trying to use up those things that kind of lurk in the back of your cupboard that you know you should use. You maybe bought them on a whim or something gave them to you or whatever. You bought them for a recipe and never used them. Um, that you don't perhaps, they're not your favourite things. So they just sit there, they get shoved to the back. I've got quite a lot of things like that. So I have been trying to use things up this week and all I bought was milk and butter and a few other bits, that's all. So um, I think that's the way to go. Just uh, trying to eat as frugally as possible. And I've been just eating, I said this in my last video, just eating very simply. It's been very hot. I've been very busy. And so just eating something like a, just a very simple pasta dish. Um, you know, you don't have to have a gourmet meal every night. So I've just been doing that. It's been too hot to kind of cook and it's been too hot to eat a lot as well, actually. So anyway, um, we've done a lot, couple of lovely walks as well. So, you know, these are the things that are free at this time of year, just walking in your local area and really appreciating it. It's, it doesn't cost you anything. And we've seen some lovely sights. And I'll show you the poppies, how the poppies are looking now. Absolutely stunning. Anyway, without further ado, that's it for now. I'll show you what I've done this week and I'll come back at the end. English pointer. <laughs> I think it's like strawberry moon at the moment as well. Oh, right? it's really bright, isn't it? It's elderflowers we can't see, but some elderflowers on that tree that I would be collecting right now if I wasn't trying desperately to keep the house in order to move house. Everything like that's going to have to wait until after this open day anyway. It's a nice walk down by Justin's mum's. Archie likes it. It's been so hot today, 33 degrees. Really hot for us. Oh, I've been sweating all day and it finally feels like it's cooled down, but only to about maybe 26 or 27. It's still really warm and it's like nine o'clock at night now. It's a lovely honeysuckle in growing wild for some reason. Justin's leaving me again. He always does this. <laughs> A medieval tower. I have weddings and just actually went to a funeral there the other day, which was really sad. But it's a beautiful old tower, it's from like the 1500s. Uh, I think uh, Anne Boleyn either stayed there or her family owned it, one or the other, I can't remember now. I don't think you can't really see it, but it's just off there in the distance. Apparently, it was Henry VIII that stayed there, but Anne Boleyn stayed in the farmhouse nearby. There you are come onto my channel to learn interesting things. Mm -hmm. It's a nice view, isn't it? Look, it's ruining the view. Here's two. Ruining the view. 
just gave me chalk for it. Horrid boy. Ruining <laughs> <laughs> me video. Frugal Queen in France does it have this problem, does yeah. she? The mic's behind the camera, he doesn't mess it up. <laughs> Beehives over there, I don't know if you can see those there. Uh... Oh, she's running away because he's just been in a boggy stream and got absolutely filthy feet. Luckily, just his feet. Oh, sod. Listen to the peacocks making all that noise. Been taking a photo. The sunset. Oh, it's a proper pink one now. Hi, Mr. Shoestring. Hey. Hold it in. Hold it in. Hold it in. <laughs> Come on, look at that. That looks delicious. There's... I sit one around and take that one. Brown, this looks so good. Oh, well, these are years back, aren't they? Look at them. Look at these. Oh, look at them. Look, there's a little girl. Yeah. Oh. And that's Madge with holding me. These are the one Billy does. That's me holding Raymond. Is that Raymond again? Oh, look, that's me holding um, a friend's was. little baby before we were going back. Bubbles! Bubbles! Oh, my God! <laughs> wow! Woo -hoo -hoo! Where are you going to catch them? Look at that! Catch the bubbles! Catch the bubbles! Catch them! Bess, she's looking for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Again! Oh, catch one! Ready? Ready? Oh, I think you'll go over there because they're going to blow that way. Woo! Oh, 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 daddy! Oh, 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 I just popped a little to get a few little bits to get me through this week because I'm not doing shopping. Um, and some snacks because if I get a snack attack or Justin does in the evening, and we go to the local shop, it's much more expensive than Lidl. But this is an illustration of how much things have gone up. So we've got these crisps. Well, walkers are normally quite expensive. Um, I don't think they've, I don't know if they've gone up or not because I don't normally buy them. They, they were £2.49. Um, I just bought a, a birthday card. Birthday cards are quite good in Lidl. I got a birthday card for my dad because it's his birthday soon. Um, what have they charged me? 99p, so that's not too bad, is it, for a card? Um, I was supposed to get a free pastry, so I got this because on my little app says you're entitled to a free pastry and I activated the coupon and I just got home and realised she charged me for it. That's for Justin, anyway, never mind. Um, these are the thing that's really expensive. So these are, I always go to Lidl or Aldi to get my lactose-free milk because if I go around to our local co-op, they charge one ninety nine for this litre of milk, which is absolutely ridiculous. Up until, well, a few days ago, because the last time I went to Lidl, these cost 85 pence. Today, I went and they were 95 pence. They've gone up 10 pence. So I bought four of those. The other thing that's gone up is this very simple sorted butter. This is the cheapest one that you can buy in there. Um, and it, it wasn't that long ago that it was £1.45. It did go up to £1.65 and now it's gone up to £1.72. I think that's this week too. So... I've also got some strawberries just because we've got some um, meringues left over from a dinner party that I did for my friends the other day and I thought we could, we could use them up and um, have some strawberries and cream. We've got a little bit of cream, but I bought another cream. Um, strawberries, how much were they? They were one eighty nine. 400 grams. That's not too bad. It's strawberry season, isn't it? Snap attacks. I bought two things of Cadbury's chocolate. Um, they were 85 pence and 83 pence. You can see, you know, I can go to a shop and there'll be a bigger bar than this, but it will cost about a pound. And 
you know, I only need one bar. So psychologically, we just have a, a smaller one. We still think we've had the same. So the other thing, I've got some ibuprofen whilst I was in there because we need some. It's always worth having that. That was only 39p. I don't think that's gone up. The cream was 99p. Again, it's not something I buy a lot. So I don't know if that's gone up a lot. And then I just bought some more of the lactose free. But you can see mainly really from the, the milk and the butter that, you know, prices on basics are going up. Lola is extremely alarmed about it, aren't you, Lolly? Lola! She doesn't care, she wants to go out. This is one of my usual all up meals. I'm going to make a sort of pasta sauce. I've got a red onion, which came with a Hello Fresh thing. I didn't use it because I can't eat too much onion. Green pepper. I don't like green peppers much, so they always get left to last. A bit of broccoli. And I've got these two tomatoes that I need to chop up and put in. I've got half a cucumber as well, so I'm not going to use that, obviously, in the pasta sauce, but I'm going to make a salad with some leaves that we've grown outside and that cucumber, just to use it all up. Here we are, just to chuck it all in, use it all up, pasta, with a little minuscule salad. Some of our leaves, some cucumber and some spring onions. So hopefully that'll be nice. Now I am not really one for a vegetable smoothie, but my lodger who has left now, left in the freezer, this smoothie mix, which is frozen and it's got kale and spinach in, which I would not normally, I know people love this in a smoothie. It's not my thing. Um, with some mango and some apple. So I thought, well, I'll give it a try. I've got this manky bit of banana that needs to go in. So that can go in. And I've got these blueberries that have been, they're the ones at the bottom that are a bit soft. I don't like so much. So they're going in as well. And then I've got to put a little bit of oat milk in, I think, on top. I changed my mind about the oat milk. I might, might put oat milk in in a minute just if it needs more thinning because I haven't got any juice. So I just put a big blob of Greek yogurt on top. And now I'm going to put some honey, a blob of runny honey as well. I'm going to whiz it up. And if it needs more liquid, if it's too solid, because it looks very solid at the moment, I'll add a bit of this oat milk. would ideally would juice but I'm using up what we've got so I'm not going shopping at all because I have just generally overspent so no food <laughs> this is my very ancient Kenwood it actually replaced my even more ancient baker like Kenwood that somebody gave me which I really wish had carried on but you couldn't get any parts for it well, there it is. What a really horrible cut looking colour. Let's pour some out so it tastes nice. Okay, so it looks completely different now because I ended up making smoothie like I always make smoothie. Using some of this fallberry medley and some lemon juice. It just desperately needed something zingy and fruity. So I added some of that to half of it and I've got the other half here. So I'll see what Justin thinks, whether he likes that. I'm not keen on just vegetable smoothies. I know they had some fruit but not enough fruit. Um, if he doesn't like that, I shall add some fruit, more fruit to that one as well. That's much nicer. That'll keep me going hopefully today whilst I'm doing some painting. The first courgette. So I'm way behind some people on my Facebook group who have been having courgettes for quite a while now. I'm having lots of other things like carrots and salads. We have had some salad. Um, they've had all sorts of things. We've literally had salad and one courgette so far, but there's lots more coming. The tomatoes look like they'll be quite successful. And because I'm eating just from the pantry, I'm just having a bit of our pasta, just cooking pasta. I'm gonna cook the, the courgette in butter. I've got sweet corn, cheese, a little bit of cream. So I'm literally improvising because I, I've been busy all day getting the house ready for our open day tomorrow. And I'm just keeping it really simple, but it's lovely to have something fresh from the garden. Scallions in the US, I think you do. They've been sat cut for quite a few days, so they really, really need using. So I'm going to put those in. And I also found this soft cheese, so I'm going to put that in as well. So it's really, um, oh yes, and this too. One, my lodger left this behind when she went. 
very lazy chopped garlic. So I keep forgetting to use it because I just don't use this stuff. I use proper garlic. But it tastes the same, so I'm going to put some of that in as well. So yes, oh, the other thing, since I had COVID, white wine tastes revolting. So I keep starting bottles of wine, thinking they're really horrible, and buying another bottle of wine, saving them for cooking. And then I've realised actually it's not the wine at all, it's me. So I'm going to put a little bit of wine in as well. So here we are, it's not anything fancy. Gordon Ramsay would probably have a fit, it's got no meat in it. And it's just using up what was here. It is only me here for two. I don't know what Justin would make of this, but you know, this is going back to my student days. Just, you know, chuck it all in and hope for the best. I think that'll be quite tasty. I've added some salt and pepper already. And it just goes back to what I say, as I said in my last video, you don't have to do something fancy every night and you don't want to waste anything. So this is all stuff that needed using up and it's taken me about 10 minutes. I'm just gonna take me about 10 minutes to eat it. Then I'm gonna have a nice cool glass of cider. Just about see the poppies over in the distance. It's just a stripe of red. We're gonna go and walk over that way now, aren't we, Archie? He's having a sniff. Got some horses. Hot, all got their blankets on and things on their faces to keep the flies off their eyes. That's a good idea, but that could feel hot as well. I guess it's better than having flies all over your eyes. Actually, if you can see it, beautiful, aren't they? Actually, like some, hope it doesn't bark at them. better having these horses here than some Alsatians, German Shepherd dogs that guard this place and they run up to this fence and they bark and they're really aggressive and quite terrifying to walk past. So definitely they won't be letting them out with the horses here, that's good. And you see another flash of that red poppy field. I've shown you this before but it's really just taken over the whole field, it looks amazing now. Shade. So we've gone into the woody bit. Come on out this way. Oh, what a lovely treat in the morning. Feel those poppies. Absolute splash of red. Gorgeous. Some other lovely flowers and things down here. Looks like a bit of apple blossom or something, doesn't it? Not sure. Come on, you. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the video and a little glimpse into our frugal lives. I'm going to continue this week just to try to challenge myself to eat those things that we don't love at the back of the larder and combine them with some of the things coming through. Mainly it's going to be courgettes because that's really the only crop that's ready at the moment. Um, but we need to keep on top of eating those. And also really to go through the freezers and find things lurking in the freezer. I know there's some things like, there's some plant-based sausages that I wasn't keen on, things like that, just to see if I can find a way to use those. I was thinking maybe 
some sort of sausage casserole might get rid of those and make them taste quite nice. I just wasn't very keen on them at all. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do things like that. Save money where we can. Try to walk everywhere because the cost of petrol, my word, I just literally cannot believe it. Obviously, we, we can't walk everywhere. We have to travel back and forth from Justin's mum's. She's a dialysis patient. She has to be taken to the hospital. So that has to happen three times a week, whatever. Um, but I think what we need to do as much as possible is combine trips. So, you know, when we're doing that, do whatever else we need to do at the same time, really. So um, that's all you can do. Just try and be savvy. Try and really watch every penny that you spend. Really, really think about whether or not you need to buy something. Keep some reserves. Make sure that you don't spend every penny. You've got some reserves. I'm also keeping our stores, I mean, as well as eating from the store cupboard, eating from the back of our cupboard, I've got a separate store cupboard. And I just think things are going through the roof. They're not going to get any cheaper. So, you know, that's a little bit of an insurance policy. I've got some things there that I can make basic meals with that are very cheap. Um, you know, and if we were to have food shortages, the supply chain just looks terrible at the moment, then I know that I've got some food there. And I'm not hoarding. I'm not going out panic buying, but I do keep a sensible amount of food just in our stores. I've done it since 2000 and the millennium thing never happened, but it's been so handy in, on so many occasions. When we've been ill, um, when COVID hit, you know, we had plenty of stores. So I just would say to everybody, never kind of eat everything in your cupboard and don't have anything reserved. Always have a good sensible store cupboard i'm not talking about like a prepper thing i'm not a prepper i don't have like a garage full of massive family sized bags of rice and pasta and just a sensible amount of food so that you know if we're hit with covid again we don't have to get to the shops you know that, that, which it's just sensible in my view so think about that maybe and i'm going to try maybe to get a few more tins and things for that this week but i'll be other than that i'll just be eating from what we've got anyway that's enough waffle for now. Wish me luck. Got the viewing. I will let you know how that goes. Um, and we're off to view some houses as well later on this afternoon. I'm really hoping it's going to cool down a bit because I'm already a sweaty mess. Um, I'll see you next time anyway. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.